tailgaters, Ross of the Pigskin Tales podcast here. The buzz of summer and the anticipation of the college football season is in the air. It's the perfect time to gear up with Homefield, a premium collegiate apparel brand based in Indianapolis. They have over 150 plus college designs to choose from, each one showcasing a unique part of your team's history. My personal experience with Homefield has been exceptional. Their apparel is comfortable and their vintage designs bring back fond memories of my alma mater. So as the excitement for the upcoming college football season builds, make sure to visit Homefield's website at homefieldapparel.com. Get ready today for the upcoming season and represent our favorite teams in style with Homefield. Again, that's homefieldapparel.com. The year was 1953. The NBA was still in its infancy, but the NBA was not the only professional league around. There were other local professional leagues and mostly on the East Coast of the United States. One of those teams was the Pittsburgh Raiders, and it featured a player by the name of George Marcus. He was 6 foot 11 or 211 centimeters, and he was dominating this league. He was the fastest down the court, blocked shots like he was playing against children, and scored absolutely at will. Nobody could stop this new player. The thing about this player, though, is that he looked awfully similar to a famous high school player from Philadelphia. Was it possible that they could be the same player? This is the story of George Marcus, and this is Basketball History 101. This is Basketball History 101 with Rick Loiza. Welcome back to award-winning Basketball History 101, part of the Sports History Network. I am your host, Rick Loiza, and this is the podcast where we bring to life some of the forgotten stories from basketball history. We are bringing old-school basketball to a new-school audience. And today, we bring the story of a professional player from the early 1950s who dominated professional leagues in and around Pennsylvania for a number of years. Unfortunately, we do not have a lot of documentation on this player. There is virtually no box scores to look up and virtually no video. And now, as I said in the intro, this is not the NBA. Even the NBA filmed hardly any of their own games, let alone a minor league professional team. The teams at this level were playing primarily in high school gyms. Now, there are a few newspaper articles out there that talk about this dominant big man named George Marcus, who was taking the league by storm. The guy was averaging 40 points per game. Now, many thought that he should have been in the NBA and not playing in this lower level professional league. But here was the problem. George Marcus was not eligible to play in the NBA because he was six years too young. George Marcus was only 16 years old, and he lied about his age just to play in this lower level professional league. George Marcus was still a high school player from Philadelphia, and his real name was Wilt Chamberlain. If you know anything about Will Chamberlain, then you know that he was a hard worker. He worked at all kinds of odd jobs to earn a little extra money. For most of his summers during high school and college, he would go up to the Catskill Mountains in upstate New York to work at Kutcher's Country Club and make money as a bellhop and a waiter. He would also play basketball against NBA players who spent parts of their summer looking for good pickup games. But during the school year, he had less time for work because of his basketball responsibilities. So what could he do to get the most money in a relatively short amount of time? Well, he decided to play basketball under an assumed name to earn money. He could earn more in one game of professional basketball, even in a lower league, than he could working two weeks at a typical job that a teenager could find. Now, Will Chamberlain lived for over 40 years more after playing illegally in this professional league, but he almost never talked about it. In fact, it was a secret for a very long time, and he was not going to be the person to leak the secret. When it did come out, the only thing that he would say was that he regretted having to lie about who he was in order to play basketball. It even came up while he was a college player at the University of Kansas. There had been rumors that Chamberlain had played professional basketball while still in high school. If this could be proven true, then his NCAA eligibility would disappear immediately. Even today, in order to play at the university level, a player cannot have previously played as a professional in the same sport. 
University level sports is strictly for amateurs, or at least it used to be. The NCAA opened an investigation into these rumors about Chamberlain having played professionally while still in high school. They asked Chamberlain if he had ever played professionally. And Chamberlain said no, and the investigators took his word for it and closed the case. Chamberlain then played for three seasons at Kansas before leaving a year early to play for the Harlem Globetrotters and then the Philadelphia Warriors of the NBA. But the thing that gets me most about all of this is how did no one realize that George Marcus was actually Will Chamberlain? I mean, how many seven foot players could there have been in the state of Pennsylvania? If I saw a 16 year old Will Chamberlain walk into the room, I would know immediately who it was. He was a very recognizable person, especially considering the fact that he was surrounded by basketball people, both in high school and in this professional league. All serious basketball fans in Pennsylvania should have been able to recognize him immediately. And actually, as it turned out, many of them did. So when they hear the name announced as George Marcus, they just kept it to themselves. It seemed that the people that did know what was going on just turned away from the situation and just let him do his thing, even if he was averaging 40 points per game against grown men as a 16-year-old. As a 17-year-old player, he increased his scoring average to 50 points per game. At that point, you would think that somebody would have figured it out. Again, they did figure it out, they just chose to help keep Chamberlain secret and not say anything about it. So this is a good place to take a break and I'll be right back with more on George Marcus. I mean, Will Chamberlain. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes. Welcome back to the show and let us continue with our story on Will Chamberlain and how he played professionally while still in high school under the name of George Marcus. After playing with the Pittsburgh Raiders, he moved on to another team called the Quakertown Phase. When he was 17 years old, he averaged 40 points per game in his second year in the league and took it up to 74 points per game during that year's playoffs. He also won the league's MVP award. Now just think about that for a moment. He was still only 17 years old and he won the league MVP in a professional league full of grown men. Again. How did nobody know who he was? Well, as I said before, there were a couple of newspaper articles that named him by his real name, Wilt Chamberlain, and then go on to describe what happened during the game. My best guess is that all of the people involved worked to help keep George Marcus's true identity a secret. After all, the incentive for the team was to keep the secret because they could still keep Wilt Chamberlain on the team, and they didn't want to mess that up in any way. Now, the league as a whole also had incentives to help keep the secret because having Will Chamberlain in the lower league was good for business. Even the opposing players kept the secret for the same reason. Chamberlain was good for business. That guy sold tickets. Once he moved on to college and then to the NBA, the story died. I guess another way to say it is that the story never really saw the light of day. Rumors persisted, but nobody really pursued the story in any serious way. It was a good thing for Chamberlain that the internet did not exist back then. Could you imagine what it would have happened if something like that had been tried today? Social media would have blown up with photos, videos, conspiracy theories, and all kinds of accusations. Somebody would have employed facial recognition software to compare the videos of Chamberlain in high school and George Marcus in this pro league 
And with practically every person owning a camera phone, the secret would not have even lasted until halftime of his first pro game. The secret would have circumnavigated the entire globe in less than 15 minutes. My point is that the lack of technology back then had proven to be a primary reason that the secret never got out. By the time that Chamberlain began playing for the Harlem Globetrotters and then the NBA, nobody even cared anymore. The NBA would not have kicked him out of the league for having previously played as a professional as a teenager. They would have not cared one bit and many NBA players, especially back then, played professionally in other leagues before joining the NBA. The fact that Chamberlain had played professionally in an illegal way would have still not mattered. Chamberlain sold out arenas everywhere he played and that was good for NBA business. The NBA as a whole saw a significant financial boost when Chamberlain chose to come to the league and join the Philadelphia Warriors. So the story slash rumors sat dormant for the better part of 50 years. It was in 2017 when the story broke again and new attention was paid to what Chamberlain did way back in the early 1950s. Even today, it seems that most people are less surprised by the fact that Chamberlain even attempted to play professional basketball as a teenager than they were by the fact that he fully dominated the league as a teenager. If he was scoring 50 points per game against grown professional players, then what in the world was he doing against average high school players who were trying to defend him? In high school games, he must have looked like a man playing against a bunch of little kids. Unfortunately, there is no video at all of him playing in a professional game as a teenager, but there is a photograph of him wearing Quaker Town Faze jersey. That and some newspaper articles are the best thing we have. But it is not really a rumor anymore. After Chamberlain retired from the NBA, he was asked about it once, and he admitted that the rumors of him playing professionally as a teenager were true. But the conversation did not go much further than that. In the end, it is absolutely incredible what he was able to do and how he was able to do it at such a high level. The only other player who I believe could have played in a lower level professional league as a teenager and dominated are Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and perhaps LeBron James. I cannot think of any other player whose game was already developed at the age of 16 to be able to dominate professionals. So that is the story of George Marcus, maybe the greatest teenage player of all time. Join us next week when we share the story of Bob Knight, one of the most controversial coaches in college basketball history. Of course, he would completely disagree with that assessment. That's next time on Basketball History 101, part of the Sports History Network, the headquarters of Sports Yesteryear. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com to find out more about this and other sports history podcasts. If you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts. And check out our page on Facebook. It's called Basketball History 101 Podcast. There you will find shorter historical posts as well as comments and discussion starters on today's game. I'll also announce there when new episodes come out. I want to thank my producer and editor, Jacob Loiza. Join us each week as we continue to mine the history of basketball for more great stories from the past. Take care and see you soon. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. Do you wish you knew more about the 100 seasons of the NFL? You're in luck because you found the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. From the founding of the league in an auto showroom, all the way to what it is today, America's favorite sport and a behemoth of an industry. My name is Ernie Chapman. Football is my passion, and I want you to come along with me each week to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board, my DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.